Hey everybody, just a quick video today to look at creating some custom content for InfoWorks 360, specifically around barriers, or which is another name for fences. Uh, as an example here, I've got a model that's been created, and what I'd like to do is put a fence around the outside that uh, looks more like a split rail fence, a white split rail fence for lack of a better term. You'll get the idea of the fence style that I'm looking for here just in a, in a moment. So to begin, what I'd like to do is create a, a barrier to represent my fence. So we'll come over under the creation tools. We'll go to barrier. And you'll see that there are two that ship with the software out of the box, a gray concrete looking barrier and then a green one. Um, neither of those will work for my split rail or my white fence. So let's go ahead and just pick some points to define this, this fence. We'll double click when finished. When it's in, I can go ahead and edit some of the properties of that fence by going into Edit, right-clicking, and going to Properties. I know the fence height that I'm going to be working with here is about 5 foot, so we'll uh, put that in, hit Enter, and then Update. We see my fence update on the screen, and what I'm left with looks like a concrete barrier fence. So what I'd, uh, what I'd like to do instead is have something that looks more like this, this white fence. Uh, actually have in the area... Uh, actually a different uh, uh, location, but a fence that looks similar. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hop into uh, my Google Maps here, and we'll zoom up onto an area here. We'll come in, and that is the type of fence that I'm, I'm interested in. So let's maybe pick a point on the screen here, and I can grab a uh, do a screen grab of what that fence looks like, and then we can we can work from there. So what I'm going to use is uh, Snagit. It's a tool from Camtasia. You can use any number of tools to capture the area that you're interested in. But I'm just going to take and pick a point here. Uh, oops. We'll uh, actually do that once more. We'll uh, hit the button here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture just the area I'm interested in. So we'll pick and hold. I want to pick up the fence. And then we'll come over and then also pick up the face boards to represent that, uh, that material. So we'll go with that for right now. Just doing something quick here. Let's uh, save that off so we can look at it here in just a moment. So we'll save that off as a uh, PNG file. Let's put that out on my desktop here. Let's grab, oh, we'll grab it from right here. And I've got a folder here called Tuesday. We'll put this in. We'll just call this Fence Photo. So we've got something to work with. All right, let's minimize this. We'll minimize my Google Maps. We'll come back into this environment. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to go to Style Palettes. And when we go to that, we see that for all of the different uh, components that we can work with when it comes to bar barriers, there are our two uh, barrier types we can work with, gray or green. Let's uh, look at Materials. And you see there's a, a catalog here for fence and barriers. Let's double click on that. And the only material that I have to work with uh, out of the box is a wooden uh, pattern type fence. Let's create a new material to represent the one that we just created. So we'll go ahead and we'll click plus. And we'll say this is going to be a texture. Let's go out and find off our desktop in my Tuesday folder here. We'll grab the photo. It's going to add that, and then I can start to uh, adjust some values. The width between the posts is probably 8 feet. The height of my fence I'd like to use is 5, so we'll call that good. We'll say OK. All right, so we've got a new material uh, available to us. The next thing, let's go back to barrier and let's build a, a custom barrier type. So we'll go ahead and click the plus here to create one. Uh, the length is going to be 8 foot between the posts. The height is going to be 5 foot. Let's say that the thickness will make that a half a foot. Uh, spacing, I'm going to go with 8. Left material will uh, come in and we'll select from our fence and barriers the new material we made. We can give that a name. I've got a new material for right now because we're just doing it quickly, but I'd probably call it white fence or something like that. So it's a little more descriptive. Let's say new material. All right, and then uh, for the other ones, uh, I don't need to map a texture to those. We'll just go ahead and set those to white because it's going to be a white fence 
So where it begins, where it ends, and then the top. And then we'll see what we get. So we'll go ahead and uh, say OK. Our new fence type has been created. Let's call this white fence. And it, by clicking, dragging, and dropping it down onto our model, it's uh, it's automatically created. Now when I I look at it, it's not it's not bad. A uh, couple things. First, as you look at the top, I've got that top material and some. Uh, materials on the end which aren't looking exactly like what I'd uh, what I'd like uh, so that helps us understand how it's defined and how it's created so let's go back and edit that we'll come back into our white fence and that top material I really don't need anything so what I could do is we'll come back to material oops we'll come back to color and where that's already been set to white we're gonna come down to alpha channel which is another word for transparency I'm gonna set that to zero so that'll make the top transparent. If we click OK, it'll update in our model, and that looks looks much better as we look at it. All right, we could uh, try something uh, similar for the uh, the ends on that as well. But one of the other things that I'm I'm interested in is I've got the image here, but you know I'd like to be able to see through it. I'd like it to be uh, transparent so that I could see my ground material behind it. You know, what could we do to accommodate that? Well. What we could do is, is uh, improve our photograph to uh, remove those areas that we captured. So let's do this. I'm going to use a package uh, called Photoshop. Um, any package that will allow you or support a image that has a transparent background will work. So let's go ahead and open uh, off my desktop here. We'll come down to desktop. We'll come down to Tuesday. Grab my fence photo. And then what we're going to do is this. We'll start to capture some different areas that we'll work with in the model. So we'll open up an area here. It's going to be uh, my uh, represent my fence post. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to start windowing other areas. also gives us the opportunity to kind of square this up. Let's grab that area. It's going to represent one of the face boards. That'll rep represent another face board another one and then the final one here at the bottom so we're just doing this quickly I'm going to create a new layer and then we're going to take with the paint bucket here my default uh, color is already set to white so I'm gonna grab my paint bucket and we'll just click to uh, fill that in that works pretty good and then what I'm gonna do is I've got two layers one that has the the white panels that represents my fence and then the other one is my background I'm gonna come down to the uh, the background here and we'll just delete that so what I'm left with I've removed the photograph I've now got uh, an image that is the same size that only contains white to represent the fence and transparent areas as represented by the checkers in the background so that uh, our checkerboard pattern so uh, we should be ready to go let's go ahead and save this so we'll save this into my Tuesday folder. We'll give it a JPEG or a PNG background. Let's do PNG and we'll say fence material. Save. All right. We will uh, minimize my Photoshop. Let's come back into this area. The uh, white fence is what we originally defined. So we will come in, double click on that. We will come into the area where we uh, set the uh, material. And if we look, we've just got this one. You know what? I don't have the ability to edit that here. So let's come back to the material panel. With the uh, panel we have, if we uh, double click, it will allow us to edit it or select it. We can grab the pencil to do it. I'll double click. The material that we're going to use to swap this out is going to be from our desktop Tuesday folder. We'll say fence material. So that was added. I'm good with that. And you know what? And, and it automatically updates my uh, my model because that's uh, that's how it was defined uh, to use that uh, that material. So as I look at it now, I see that I've got a uh, split you know, split rail once again, for lack of a better term, uh, looking fence that I can use within InfoWorks 360. It's uh, transparent that I can see through it, and it gives me the representation of the fence that I was looking for. 
So a lot of different ways we can create fences, a lot of different ways we can create custom content depending about how it's going to be used and the information that we're working with. But this is one way that uh, should you desire a fence beyond what is uh, ships with the application, it gives you some ideas on how to take and create some new custom content. So with that, I hope this has been helpful and I look forward to talking to you again soon. See ya.